All right, peace and much love. Zinaru here. Welcome to the latest message from the minister. Uh, this week's message from the minister is actually a pretty simple message. Um, I hope they all are uh, to, to, you know, most degrees of, of overstanding. Um, but this week's message from the minister is mistakes in the wisdom. Mistakes in the wisdom. You know, we talk a lot about spiritual alchemy or just alchemy in general, which is the transmutation of certain subjects and objects into other things, you know. And, um, you know, transforming our mistakes into wisdom. It's, it's one of the easiest lessons to learn and it relieves all kind of things like guilt, stagnation, uh, brings us to a place of forgiveness. Because what happens is we learn that those things in life that look like they're negative or down or wrong or bad or so on and so forth can actually be reapplied in our life and turned into something that makes us wiser, makes us smarter, gives us overstanding. And so tonight we're going to be talking about wisdom, knowledge, overstanding, and really more accurately just talking about its practical use in our day-to-day -day lives. Because you know, there's one thing we should be all able to do, and we should be allowed to make mistakes. They say to err is the human, and to forgive is divine. And so, um, you know, that old, old saying, it's, it's very interesting because it acknowledges that part of our humanity is to make errors, to make mistakes. This is how we learn. And, and this is, you know, this is, this is why a lot of people fail in life not because of the mistakes they make, but because they're afraid to make mistakes. A lot of people fail on achieving the things in life, say for instance, their purpose, a closer relationship with God, a closer relationship with their family, with truth, with love, whatever that is, they fail to achieve that because they're afraid of making certain mistakes or certain errors. And tonight we're gonna to look at and read the definition of what a mistake actually is. And what we can do is we can remove this, this judgment, you know, this carnal law judgment that's always judging us and always saying that you made a mistake buying this product. You made a mistake, you know, listening to this person. You'll make a mistake if you follow this, but you'll make a mistake if you follow that. You'll make a mistake if you believe in this religion. You'll make a mistake if you vote for this person, you know, and so on and so forth where where they've, they've you know, in this society that we've lived in, they fractalized it down to where every decision could possibly be a mistake. And every mistake almost seems like it's life or death. Why? Because they use life or death music in advertising. You know, um, I, I was just watching this week and, and it was very interesting just noticing like this epic music, what used to be epic music reserved for movies. It's just, it's on trivial things now. Like you used to hear epic music when like the villain would come in, like Darth Vader, dun, 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 dun. And seeing that artistically growing up, like that was impactful. You heard that music and, and you, whoa, you know, and now they put that into advertising and they're going to, you know, they'll sell a chicken sandwich going dun, 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 dun. And they'll use this like exciting music and, and music that really moves people like Mozart or Beethoven or Bach to go back and just sell a product, a cheap product that, uh, you know, not even an idea, not even a concept, not even, you know, a philosophy, just using, um, just to appeal to people's base, base, base like reptilian brain needs, you know, like, like the reptilian mind is worried about what chicken sandwich to eat, you know. And so, um, well, actually, before we get started, welcome you all here, just jumped right into it. Um, it was funny because uh, I, I was getting ready to come up here and I was just kind of taking my time this evening and then all of a sudden, like the, the brain just started flowing. I was like, oh, wait a minute, you know, or the ideas started flowing. I was like, oh, the message is coming through me right now. Let me go plug in the camera and the mic and get going. So I didn't even finish all my notes because I just felt the message coming through. And I just wanted to thank you all for being here. You know, um, um, those of you who, you know, I speak to on the phone or those of you who we, we chit chat on the internet and um, whatever it is that we've had interaction with, those of you who've made the, the donations this week um, or last week, I just I want to send a personal thank you to you as well. 
And um, just, just thinking that you all are here and we're all here together now here at Spirit. And those in the future, as we talk about every week, those in the, the far future, the far reaching futures who are here now, um, thank you for being here too. Uh, we are all here in spirit. We are all here in the oneness and the wholeness of our creation. And um, what, a, what a great time to experience this so-called three-dimensional reality, this water body. And it's so interesting because um, there's a certain fragility to this water body. And then at the same time, there's a certain uh, durability to this water body. And, you know, some people are born more fragile and some people are born more durable and some people's upbringing makes them more fragile and some people's upbringing makes them more durable and sometimes uh, the same upbringing in the house can make one child fragile and the other kid child durable it's just how it, 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 it's interesting how that works because we got to remember that there's always like the spirit inhabiting the body is the one who's going to be interpreting the experience and so, you know, as an example in that experience of, say, like, uh, two kids grow up in an abusive home, right? Grow up in an abusive home. It happens all the time. And uh, one child takes it real personally and, 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 and develops a fragile ego, a sensitive ego who's, like, just always afraid to explore the world and always feels down about themselves and always feels, um, you know, no confidence. And then the other child, this, the, you know, the other child can say, yo, fuck this, I ain't. I don't give a fuck what mom and dad say. I don't give a shit what they what they're about. And I don't, you know, I mean, I'm saying in an abusive, you know, house, you know, and, and that that person though uh, can grow up and and be empowered by that and be like, you know what? I don't care what the old man said. I'm gonna make something of myself and, and be really durable. And and it, I'm you know, I, and I'm speaking this from experience, just from people I've known and uh, seeing that a few times that you know. What we bring to the equation, what our spirit brings to the equation, who, who we really are inside is who we're going to be no matter what. No matter what. You know, I, I used to, um, you know, when I really started the spiritual path, and I've been on it my whole life, I, you know, from, from the time I can never not remember studying spirituality and, and really uh, wanting to understand and know God and to feel God's presence and, you know, know my relationship with God and, and why I was created. You know, since I was little, um, I always had that. Always, always. Uh, but, you know, as I grew older and, and I started getting into work and, and cars and girls and music and, you know, spend money and, you know, just, you know, that, that world, I, I, I'd, I, I'd, I, I would, you know, spirituality became something kind of more kind of on the back burner. And uh, I made a lot of mistakes in that time. You know, I, I, made a, I made a lot of errors in that time of my life. And I'm glad that I did. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't really think back then about where I would be going or what my purpose was. I thought the spirituality at the time was just something to kind of help, you know, deal with the so-called world. A little did I realize that that same Bible that I was reading, right, was, was showing a way out of the outside, out of the world, and into, you know, a whole new reality, a whole new creation, a whole new creation, which is, you know, earth, out of the world into the earth. And same with the Tao Te Ching and, and Zen Buddhism and, and, you know, the study of the Bhagavad Gita and, and ultimately with the study of hip hop and, and, and the gospel of hip hop, that life is an experience. And how we react to that experience really says a lot about our character and our nature, who we naturally are. So we can, Two people can have the similar same experience, but it'll be a different experience because their interpretation of that experience is different. One may be empowered and one may be disempowered. And they're both having that experience. And what's interesting about that experience is we can look and say, well, it would be a mistake to take this experience and be disempowered with it. 
But what if that feeling of disempowerment was the actual quote unquote mistake that was made that acts as a catalyst towards that person's empowerment? You know, when we're using spirituality or God as just kind of this coping mechanism, where we're using our philosophies as a coping mechanism for the world, we're really living in denial of what our actual experience that we're experiencing is. And once we accept and can embrace the experience that we're experiencing, like, yo, I feel unworthy. I, I feel like I'm not worthy of, of, of experiencing love or I feel like uh, I'm just a mistake, that like God just made a mistake creating me. I just, I just feel like that. I just feel like I can do nothing right. Everything I do, I always do wrong, you know. And a lot of people will maybe feel that inside deep, deep. I'm talking deep on like a subliminal level or a subconscious level. These subconscious belief systems can be experienced by somebody but they could be going around saying the mantras all day, saying the mantras all day. I'm healthy, wealthy, aware. And, uh, but if the subconscious is saying I'm worthless, I'm useless, uh, those experiences in the outside world are going to still be of what the subconscious is saying. And what happens is that it's because of fear of embracing something like that, saying, wow, I actually feel like I'm unworthy of experiencing God, experiencing love, experiencing truth, experiencing beauty of experiencing health, love, awareness, wealth, whatever it is, we can say, yo, I'm unworthy of experiencing that. But when we say it, when we say that, when we say, hey, I, I feel like I'm unworthy of experiencing that, we say, hey, that's a mistake. To actually feel like that, I actually know intuitively that it's a mistake to feel unworthy. Now then the question and the transmutation then becomes into the wisdom, how do I go from this feeling that I've made a mistake and turn it into something else? Feeling unworthy, how do I turn that into confidence and worthiness? Because this world is conditioned and programmed, as I said earlier, to make people feel unworthy of themselves, of God, of the experience of God, of experience of what we would call the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the nature of God, the being of God. Because the, the time we grow up, it's like you get graded, first grade, first grade, and then you get graded in the grade. be an interesting... Um, Etymology, we should look up uh, grade in the future. So you go in, you go into first grade and you, you're automatically getting graded on your performance on, you know, can you articulate certain things? Can you add certain numbers? How do you interact with other people? You know, all of all of the all of the things that they judge. Because the grade has a lot to do with judgment. At least in our understanding and our experience of it. Oh, you got a D, so we're going to judge you as a D student. But a D student might be the best artist in the class. A D student might be the smartest kid in the class. That F student might be the greatest philosopher of our time. We don't know. Because that unworthiness just gets smacked on a kid at a young age, like pop, pop, pop. Unworthy, unworthy. And then other kids get the A's. Oh, they're worthy, but then that child becomes afraid. I better keep getting the A's because I don't want to become unworthy. I don't want to become a pariah on society. I don't want to ever be like those other people. So it's the same thing that's motivating. It's the same judgment that's motivating. So we grow up not only being judged by the adults around us, we end up judging the other kids around us. And as we grow up, we just it, it's just a judgment becomes a way of life, judging everybody for the smallest mistakes, for the smallest. You made a mistake. You made a mistake. You made a mistake at work. You could lose your job if you lose your job for making a mistake. You could lose your family. You could lose it. You do not make mistakes. I mean, it's that serious. 
Don't make mistakes when you drive. The consequences of making a mistake, the consequences of, and this is man's carnal law. This is man's carnal nature. This is not God's reality. This isn't how God created us. This isn't how, how any of the masters of time and space ever taught to treat one another in such a way of judgment and mistake after mistake. So we grew up in this society and it's just like the ego of the world always telling people they're worthless. You're not enough. You don't have this. You don't have that car. You don't have that house. You don't have that understanding. You don't have that. You're a mistake. You're a mistake. You're a mistake. You're a mistake, right? Okay, fine. Let me embrace that world's judgment. I'm a mistake of the world. But you know what? What is looks like a mistake in the world oftentimes, if not usually, always ends up being exactly what the Spirit needed to learn. Now, I'm not talking about like some ignorant sin, like beating somebody up for no reason or robbing and stealing and thieving. I'm not talking about that kind where that's a sin. That's wrong. I'm talking about an honest mistake. Mistakes get made in life. And people should not have to lose their entire being because of one or two mistakes that they make. And you should not be sitting in judgment of yourself for normal mistakes that humans make because this is how we're geared. This is what we're created to do. Bump the head on the, bump the foot on the rock, boom, bump the foot on the rock again, boom. Maybe I should move that rock. Pick up the rock, move the rock, flatten out the ground. Oh, mistake, you know, I avoided the mistake of bumping my foot on the rock again. Now I've learned how to make a path. Now I know if I clear out all these rocks, I have a path and not just me, but others have a path to walk on now. So you shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes, you know? And, and this gets, this, let's just bring it into more of a, 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 a hip hop space here. You know, a lot of people are afraid of, of grabbing the mic and making mistakes in front of people. Why? Because the televisions told them that those other rappers, he never wrote a rap in his life. He just goes up and freestyles whole albums. So, okay, so he can do that. If you can't do that, but you still want to grab the mic, pick up the mic. And this applies to any arena of life. Now, I've told that story a hundred times, but you know, it's like, man, I made so many mistakes as an MC. And I learned from each one and I went back, kicked my own ass. You know, how could you do that to yourself, Zen? How could you stumble? You finally had the mic again and you fucked up, Zen. How could you do that? Oh, I let it burn, you know. I let the mistake burn. And then once that mistake burned and turned into warm and I harvested and I harnessed that fire. Okay, see, then I could pick up the microphone again and not make the same mistake again, but then can make another mistake or what would appear to be a mistake. But that mistake is transmuted into wisdom, knowing now the wisdom, then applying that wisdom, it becomes overstanding. I just applied the wisdom. You know, I made the mistake. I had the knowledge. Okay, had the knowledge grab the, of how to grab the mic. Okay, had the knowledge of what to say, oh, but it didn't come out the right way. Okay, and so now I got the wisdom of what it feels like when it comes out not the right way. What mistakes did I make for me not to spit the rhyme that I was supposed to spit? Okay, next time grab the mic with those other two in mind. Don't make the same mistake again. Now I have overstanding. I gained the wisdom from making the mistake and now I transmute the, it from a mistake into wisdom and then I use that wisdom to perform overstanding. And that's, that, that's just on grabbing the mic. You can apply this to anything, to gardening, to cooking, to, to, to raising a child. You know, they say like children don't come with a, an instruction manual, but you can go to Barnes and Nobles and they got instruction manuals everywhere or wherever, bookstores and, you know, and DVDs. And this person's an expert and a lot of them don't even have kids. So they don't even go there. Um, like, like there's no, nobody who like, I, I'm not going to go there. I'm not even going to go there. But, you know, reading the books and getting the advice, you still have to have the experience itself. And every child is different and every situation is different. Right. So like 
yeah, yeah, you just go through as a parent and make mistakes and learn from the mistakes. You can't beat yourself up over them. And once again, I'm not talking about beating a kid or something bad like that. I'm talking about honest mistakes here. This is no way condoning any kind of ill behavior or any kind of wrong uh, behavior. This is talking about actual real mistakes that are going to be made in life. And some things do have consequences, you know. I mean, there's a big mistake somebody could make by, like, drunk driving. How many people, and, and somebody dies from a drunk driver? That's more than a mistake. That's a sin because you did know better. You knew better before you got in the car. Don't drink and drive. You've been told your whole life, don't drink and drive. That's, that's, that's not just a mistake because you're going to see that not knowing something is a mistake and, and then ha suffering the consequences of not knowing. As a matter of fact, let's just look at it. Okay, so mistake. This is the uh, American Heritage Dictionary, third edition. Mistake, definition one. An error or a fault resulting from defective judgment, deficient knowledge, or carelessness. An error or a fault resulting from defective judgment, deficient knowledge, or carelessness. A lot of times we just make mistakes because we don't know. If I would have known, I wouldn't have done that. But now that I know, I won't do it again. If I, if I would have known, I would have done that. But I didn't know, so I didn't do it. But now that I know, I will do it next time. You see, this is where we make these mistakes and then it becomes like the aha moment, the awareness moment. Definition of mistake number two. A misconception or a misunderstanding. A misconception or a misunderstanding. See, this is where we have to stop judging each other so harshly on misconceptions and misunderstandings. Somebody makes a mistake and like their life can be over in cancel culture nowadays. And not even a mistake that other people deem is a mistake. This judgment in society has got to chill. <laughs> like, like the new, the, 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 whatever this is, the so-called new world order, this beast system, this Babylon, whatever this thing is, whatever you want to name it, the judgment, the constant judgment, they have got to chill. And, and really, it's us as a people who've got to chill. Okay? Being able to discern and use proper judgment is essential. But as a society as a whole, whole, wow. And the TV is just telling people how to judge one each other on a daily basis, right? So people don't want to make mistakes because they're afraid of judgment, but mistakes are just a part of life. Misunderstandings do happen. Misconceptions do happen. People are deficient of knowledge. People are careless. People have defective judgment. People make errors. You know, it's part of being a human. Mis uh, mistake in, mistaking, mistakes to understand wrongly, to misinterpret. You know, that happens. Some people are gifted with, with being able to understand and interpret events and reality. But you can believe that that's from many lifetimes of learning that, you know, some, some folks out there are just younger souls and don't have as many lifetimes of experience. This isn't to make excuses. This is overstanding and understanding that mistakes are going to happen. Definition two, to identify incorrectly. You know, that happens too. People make mistakes. Oh, I thought you were so-and-so. My bad. Oh, I thought, oh, okay, I get it now. You know, happens all the time. To make a mistake uh, is from the Middle English, mistaken, to misunderstand, from Old Norse, from Old Norse, mistaka, mistaka, to take an error, miss, wrongly, see, may, in appendix, plus taka, to take. So to wrongly take, to wrongly take something, you know, and not stealing, but to wrongly take something for what it's not. And some mistakes have more consequences than others. But those mistakes that have more consequences than others, a lot of times you'll see, if you're really honest, 
that you had the warnings, that you were warned beforehand, that there was something happening, you know. Society taught us that, or a book taught us that, or the Bible taught us that, or an old story taught us that, or a, a, a rap song taught us not to make that mistake, you know. And, and hip-hop's great at this. Like, like if, if, if the world could learn anything from hip-hop culture, it's how not to make mistakes. <laughs> like, 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 we make mistakes openly. And, and it's, it's kind of, it's one thing when you're young to make mistakes. It's another thing when you're in your 30s and 40s and making the same mistakes. Like, that's embarrassing, right? We should have matured by now, especially those of us in our 40s. I'm about to hit 50 in a couple of years, a year and a half, I'll be 50, right? Just a few months away from being uh, 49. And so I don't have the excuses I'm not, I can't be making the same mistakes as a 20 year old. I, I just, I can't. I'm a mature man. I'm a grown man, right? And so, so I can't sit there and fall back on, on a mistake that the 20 year olds were making or a mistake I made in my 20s. But I'll tell you something like, dudes in their 40s still acting like they're in their 20s, making the same mistakes. Like, that's a mental condition. That, that, that's a sign of a serious um, mental illness. And, and it's like, wow, man, you still make the mistake mistakes for 20 years? Like that, that, that should be looked at as, um, you know, something that needs somebody <laughs> that needs some serious help, <laughs> you know? But, you know, we've got to help ourselves out here. There ain't a lot of serious help out there. There's not a lot of serious help for grown-ass men out there who keep making the same mistakes. And, and let's be real, too. This society, the way it's set up with the usury and the judgment and the laws and, and this and that and the, the, the GMO foods and the, the, the microwave radiation and the surveillance state and, and, and the constant, you know, the constant traumatization of the public by the media and the government, like, like, like people, people fucking up in life like they're... they're like, yo, you got to be almost superhuman to even be just walking and shining nowadays in 2022. I mean, I, I just watching people down, boom, 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 boom. Like, whoa, that was a bright light that's been snuffed out. That's a bright light that's been dimmed. It's, it, it, it's, it's just a thing with time and a thing with sustainability and a thing with knowing. And those who don't learn the proper lessons from their mistakes, and let me tell you this, while you're young, making the mistakes, learn the lesson, turn it into wisdom, and then perform overstanding with that wisdom that was gained. And don't be afraid to make new mistakes that are honest mistakes. If you're an artist, you're going to make mistakes while you're exploring and mastering your craft. If you're a painter, like... You want to paint cars. You're going to make mistakes. Maybe not. Maybe you have a teacher there or a teacher there showing you how to paint the car. And the first time you got a natural, but I guarantee after 10 times, you'll go back and say, oh, man, I would have done this different. I would have changed that. I would have taken that. What you would see is a mistake after you gained the knowledge, you know, looking back. I, I, I go back and listen to my old tracks. And I'm like, oh, I would mix it like that. I would, I would add this to the mastering or I would, you know, I, I could listen and say I would do that. But at the time, I was putting my best foot forward and I wasn't afraid to make mistakes. Maybe it's just because I'm a Leo. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. But I just, you know, my mistakes as, um, as a hip hopper were seen because I was, you know, out uh, in my community, by the whole community seeing and so there's an honesty that comes along when we want to be honest with ourselves. We're honest with our community. What do I got to hide? What do you know? What do I got to hide? You know, I mean, I've got private things that, that I, I believe privacy is a requirement of God. And everybody's everybody's private life should not be put on blast publicly. And and watching like you know TMZ just blast out people's private lives publicly all the time, like like they're hyenas. Like TMZ is the most disgusting. Like it's just disgusting. That's all I'm gonna say. Just just 
preying on people's misery and people's personality and, and judging other people's mistakes. Well, the, the ones who be running TMZ, a lot of their shit ain't all public like that. They don't put all their mistakes public like that. You know? So, they, they, they just represent, like, the, they used to have this thing, they're like the new National Enquirer. Like, they used to have this thing called the National Enquirer. It may be still around, but it was this magazine where they air, like, celebrities' dirty laundry. And as a kid, I'd be like, I mean, like, the dude made a mistake or she made a mistake or they, why do I need to know that? I don't care. You know? If, like, if they murdered somebody, okay, yeah, let that be public. Like, so-and-so's been murdering people. But, like, beyond that, like, 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 like why, is it, why is somebody's private life made to be public just because they're a public figure? Why is that okay? Because what happens then is people see that in the public and then they just put everybody in their public life oh I'm just going to make people's private life part of the public life and da 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 you know privacy is a requirement of God I like my private time when I'm sitting there in meditation I don't need listening devices I don't need people you know seeing I'm, I like to meditate I like to chill by myself I like time alone with God it's time alone with self that privacy with God we should have things that aren't on the internet we shouldn't have our whole life and every picture of everything on the internet. It, it, there's more appreciation, just like that music analogy I was using earlier with music. Like a musical score when you, when you would pay to go see a movie and you just had a TV and it wasn't always just blasting like, you know, the most epic music for the most stupid things. That music had a better feeling. It had, it had more meaning. The music had more meaning in that way. Same thing with privacy, like people's, uh, you know, they just want people's uh, private lives to be public now. And only, it, it's, it's, it's just gotten to the point where it's, it's just so insane. The grown men, basketball players, right? Sports athletes who, who when I grew up, were supposed to be the manliest of men. They sit around on these, these sports shows talking about people's private lives and their feelings and what they thought about what he said and she said. and that, I mean, it just, it's just a bunch of gossip. It's just a bunch of gossip. And it's not manly. It's not grown up. It's not adult. There's nothing even remotely interesting about it. But what happens is people just grow up and they get used to this. And so everything becomes this great judgment and judgment, judgment, judgment. Everybody's just so free with their judgment. But not looking at the perpetuators of like some real evil out there. People are afraid of like the real evil that's going on. And not the real evil that the news is telling you that's evil. No, I'm talking about the real evil that's going on underneath people's noses every single day. And like, where's, where's, where's the line in the sand? What's the, what's the line in the sand? Where you're not even allowed to make mistakes as a human being? Like they talk about the, um, the credit score system where people are going to, you know, have their phones in, in China, I guess they put this in. You can, you can look it up on the Internet there. And where people are giving credit scores for their behavior in public. So if somebody like jaywalks, boop, boop, their credit score gets taken down. Like you jaywalk in the United States, if you get caught by a police, you might get a ticket. But imagine if, if you, like, you got an implant in you that, that, that tells the Tell, tells the computer system you jaywalked and then you lose credit score. And then you're late with the payment and you lose social credit score. Or you're late to work and you lose social credit score. Or you watch a movie or a video or read something that you weren't supposed to, you lose so, social credit scores. And then all of a sudden, without the high enough social credit score, you start getting locked out of certain access to certain parts of society. Based on what the computer's algorithm is saying about that person. Complete invasion of privacy and the complete lack of a human to be able to make a mistake. And it's funny because God created us with the ability to learn from our mistakes. Therefore, God gave us the ability to make a mistake. And then when we learn from our God-given ability to make a mistake, we use our God-given 
ability to transmute that mistake. We have this alchemical spiritual power to transmute a mistake into wisdom and then just perform overstanding with it. But that other system, that little AI system, like it doesn't get it. Why? Because a computer is not supposed to make mistakes. So it can never learn from itself. It's not supposed to make an error. How are you gonna how are you gonna learn and go like have you ever walked like when we were learning to walk, we made mistakes. We 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 like the leg went this way and we we were going that way and we fell over, you know. Like I remember like skateboarding. I made I made so many mistakes skateboarding that I realized that like I don't want to die skateboarding. I just don't have the coordination to do the tricks that most of the other skaters are doing. What is my strong points? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I just, I, we used to have little banana boards before the boards got wide. We had these like little skinny boards and, the, and, the, and they'd be loose. And so I'd be cruising down a hill one time and I bailed because I was going so fast to get me shakes, right? Just scraped up my whole body. Never made that mistake again. Uh, you know, launched on a launch ramp, flew through the air, broke my arm, never made the, well, broke my left elbow, never made that mistake again. You know, dropping it on the, uh, on the half pipe, boom, clunked my head, shoot, clunked my shoulder. Like, I was just like, yo, as cool as it looks to, to ride on the half pipe, is this what I want? Uh, do I want to just keep bumping my head on this? Now, here's the thing. Other kids who did allow themselves to bump their heads. They weren't afraid of it. They learned how to skate the half pipe and ripped it. And then they got the, the fame and notoriety that came with that. But me, I was just like, man, I was just like always bruised up. And I was just like, man, I don't even know. Same playing football, right? I was quick. I could catch a football. Once I started getting sacked by dudes who outweighed me by 150 pounds, I was like, yo, this ain't for me. But, you know, you'll learn that when we make mistakes or when we take the bruises and we take the bumps, you might say, all right, you know what, this ain't for me, but I'm glad I had that experience, right? So, like, with my skateboard, I just realized that I could just cruise. I got some, I got some soft, I, like, I was like, what do I like, what is my favorite thing to do while I'm skateboarding, right? Well, really, a half pipe and all that, 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 that looks cool, but, but really what I love about skateboarding is I love put my headphones on, got my Walkman, and I would have one tape and two tapes. They'd have to be tapes that I could listen to over and over on repeat. I'd take, you know, 90-minute tapes. This is before I even knew, you know, 120-minute tapes. They, they actually made those, um, 60 minutes on each side. But the 90-minute tape, you know, and I would, I would just put a lot of music on that that I knew I would like and could listen to over and over again get the Walkman in there, get the batteries, right? And, and then just cruise along with my headphones on, listening to music for hours, just, you know, going to friends' houses, going across town. And I remember like my legs just getting really buffed and ripped because I'm just skating. And, and because I pushed with my right, my left leg had, they, like they would get built up differently, you know? But the point being is that as we make mistakes and we take the bumps and bruises, we start adapting and we start knowing who we are a little more. And we start saying, oh, this is what fits my lifestyle. This is what fits my character. This is who I actually am. You know? And if we're not allowed, like, like we see this with parents all the time who don't allow their kids to ever get a bump, a scratch, or a bruise, and then they got this soft kid running around who's afraid of life afraid of germs, afraid of whatever, you know? I mean, I, I can't even imagine what these kids who went through these last two years of school, in public school, the younger kids, I can't even imagine like this, the, the, the mental disorders that, that can happen unless, you know, the community start taking care of what these kids have been through. These last two years of, of just complete traumatization just this completely traumatic experience for children while all the adults are worried about themselves. And this is what's happened with this judgmental society is this creating a society of narcissists who only, 
only care about their opinion and themselves, regardless of what anybody else's experience is. People will deny the truth so they can stay comfortable with the lie. And we need to know, as living, thinking, breathing human beings, as mature adults, that we're not responsible because somebody's uncomfortable with the truth. We're not responsible that, oh, you're living a comfortable life. I'm not responsible for that. I'm not here to cater to that. People want us to like sit there and say, oh, okay, let me join you in your illusion. Let me play make-believe with you. Let me pay, play pretend with you. And, and, and we see this all over in the world. Oh, let's just not talk about it. Let's just pretend that it didn't go away. Oh, namaste. And, and I was thinking about this earlier. Namaste is such a deep word. It's an experience. It's not like, oh, you know, the, the Hindus have a saying, namaste, that means this. And the people go, oh, namaste, namaste. Like, like no, that, that, that's like a word like nirvana. Nirvana is an experience. It's not a word. Faith is an experience. It's not just a word. Zen is an experience. It's not just a word. Hip hop is an experience. It's not just a word. And if you're going to have an experience, you're going to have to make mistakes to actually experience and have that experience to know what it is. You almost got to know more of what it's not to experience what it is. And if you're afraid to make a mistake because society is conditioned so many people to be afraid to make a mistake because all oh, the consequences, all oh, the consequences, all the consequences I was told that was going to happen to me. Well, I was well, I was just like just throwing the world out the window. Actually, it was just being thrown out the window for me while the world just being stripped away from me. And I'm just sitting there with my myself. Oh, do you know the consequences of not uh, of 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 go, uh, going into foreclosure on your home? Do you know the consequences of not having a bank account? Do you know the consequences of 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 uh, trying to start your start your MC or your rap career? People, I was like, I'm not even I'm not even starting a rap career. Like I'm 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 working with an organization uh, to preserve hip hop. And, and I'm learning to MC as just part of the ministry, as part of what I'm doing. But people are like, oh, he's just trying to start a rap career. Like people I used to, I'm like, man, when, like I never, add, I never ever even uttered the words out of my mouth. I'm going to start a rap career. But people were judging me of that, not even knowing anything that I was going through. But if I would have listened to them, do you know what's going to happen to you? Do you know the consequences? I, I like, 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 like what? And I got warnings like, oh, do you know that like, 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 oh, you're going to lose your family. You keep going in that direction. So I stopped going in that direction. I started to change behavior. It still happened. Right. So the consequences that everybody said was going to happen didn't happen. Even when I tried to hold on to that, I was like, oh, I don't want to lose this. Let me grab on to that. I still lost it. So is that, is that the consequences of my actions when I'm saying I don't want to lose this, I'm going to hold on to it and it still goes? No, there's something greater at work there. Something bigger. Wisdom. When you look back at it and say, wow, wait a minute. A lot of this that happened to me was happening to me. Regardless of what I was doing. Now, this is where, that's where we're ignorant. That's when we don't know. But through that experience, we say, da, let me say this and let me see this for what it is and let me grow. What is God teaching me through this experience? Oh, what is God teaching you? That's where the wisdom is. God is teaching you wisdom through the experience of the so-called mistake that you're experiencing. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a reason to have some joy in your heart and to have a warm heart? Well, I might go out and make a mistake tomorrow just so I can learn a lesson. And they got to be honest mistakes, right? I, I got a, um, I've got new brakes, ro brake pads, rotors, um, I gotta paint the calipers because they're rusty. I've gotta put new injectors 
and uh, new spark plugs. Oh, and new engine mounts on my car, right? <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. It is. But by doing this myself, I'm going to save like two grand, three grand. Like, like it's crazy how much I'm going to save just by doing this simple, you know, I'll say, let's say 18, yeah, two grand because of the parts. Yeah, two grand. I'll save two grand by doing this myself. There's videos on YouTube, instructional videos. I've worked on cars before. Uh, people who've worked on cars know this isn't a hard job. But I'm going to go out there knowing that it's okay to make mistakes. And then I'm not going to lose my focus and lose my, lose my, my cool and, and, and give up on a project that I'm about to start. Why? Because I know it's okay to make mistakes. So why am I going to judge myself for that? But any project that you're going to go work on in life, like why, why, why hold yourself back? Because you're afraid to make a mistake? Because you're afraid to make an error? You're going to learn from it. So is it a mistake if you learn from it? And that's where the alchemy is. That's where the transmutation is. Is it a mistake if you really, if you gain wisdom, could it, was it really a mistake at all? It's only a mistake when it stays a mistake and it's not transmuted into wisdom. And then that wisdom, you look back and say, hey, bro, I see what you're doing over there. Let me tell you something. This might save you some time. When I was younger, I was in this same situation and I lost my mind. I reacted. I got all caught up in my feelings. I started cursing people out. I started acting out of my character and nature. And yo, it was bad. Maybe just chill and wait. I know it's not easy. I know you want to react right now, but let's, why don't you just take some time instead of reacting, take some time, sit with it, and then respond the way you know you can respond. You see, a lot of us growing up, like me, I didn't have like no older people, like, like, like really ever, 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 you know, my mom, I'm like, you know, my mom would, you know, she gave me, she shared from her mistakes, she shared her wisdom with me. My dad shared you know, his mistakes working on cars and shared that wisdom with me. But like, like the world that I was entering into and the world that I was exploring and stuff, I had to make a lot of mistakes. Had to. Had no choice. I even had the teacher there and I was making mistakes. He was giving me like a clear cut blueprint and path and I'm still making mistakes, right? And honest mistakes, unintentional mistakes, maybe even stupid mistakes at times, ignorant mistakes at times but still mistakes. And in hip hop, that's what we gotta, especially with our, while, while we're teaching the youth, while we're, while we're you know, nurturing and developing the community, we should empower those so-called things that make mistakes because a lot of people feel like failures and they, 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 they dip into depression and then that dipping into depression, you know, depression's like a chemical release in the body. It becomes addicted to the depressing chemicals of the body. And, and, and the way the, 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 the light shines on the, that depression through joy and feelings of accomplishment and, 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 and confidence and character like that. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't be judging the kids, especially the kids, or even one another. For that very reason, we've all made mistakes. All of us have made some form of mistakes, and it even says in the gospel of hip-hop, that he's just right. And he's like, hey, this is based on a lot of mistakes that I made. This is the wisdom that I've gained. Now here's the overstanding. That's why they're called overstandings. First overstanding, second overstanding, third overstanding. And with that being said, let's read from Perform Overstanding. Perform Overstanding, um, Divine Performance number 10. This is the uh, third overstanding, the Divine Performance in the Gospel of Hip Hop, presented by the teacher KRS-1 to the Temple of Hip Hop. Perform Overstanding. In all things, seek the deeper meaning. Truly seek to know the pain, joy, needs, and wants of those who you may come in contact with. Cultivate your mind to truly overstand the situations and circumstances of others. Even just for a moment, join them in their life experience. Know this, to understand is to comprehend whatever you have been taught. However, to overstand is to experience whatever you have been taught. Such is the essence of wisdom 
and spiritual leadership. At all times, perform overstanding. Seek to know through experience your own views as well as the views of others. Never settle for simply being educated. For with spiritual overstanding comes discernment, and with discernment comes agreement, resolution, conclusion, and solutions. While knowledge makes you aware of things, overstanding makes you aware of the character and nature of things. And see, this is where it comes into overstanding who we are. You want to know your character and your nature. You're one of those things. For it is not enough to know whatever you know. You must also experience the things that you know in order to truly know them and correctly apply them. More than just knowing something, it is far better to experience whatever you know. This is the essence of wisdom and true leadership. Overstanding proves the validity of one's acquired knowledge. Know this, just because you have been educated does not mean that your education is truly productive to your real life. And, and this is so important right here. Theories must be tested and facts change all the time. The true hip hop does not just read the gospel of hip hop. She performs the overstandings of this gospel and proves to herself the value of this gospel in real life. This is for you teachers out there. The teacher must know for sure that the gospel of hip hop truly works in real life before she can seek to teach it to others. The teacher must be certain of the trueness and authenticity of the gospel of hip hop. Such certainty is found in the heart. The truth, and see this language right here. Such certainty is found in the heart. The trueness of this gospel is determined by its compatibility with your heart. Does this path feel right to you? You cannot teach this gospel if you are uncertain of its overstandings, if you are still in doubt. Know this, the teacher argues on behalf of the gospel of hip-hop, not for the sake of winning, but for the sake of offering others the possibility of experiencing health, love, awareness, and wealth. He argues only from experience and for the sake of reaching harmonious agreements between parties of conflicting opinions. And see that right there? for the sake of reaching harmonious agreements between parties of conflicting opinions. This is peace. This is talking about being a peacekeeper, a peacemaker, bringing peace to the culture, bringing peace to your community through listening and applying some basic life principles, principles like faith, you know, principles like overstanding, or discipline, or patience, or forgiveness. Bringing that to your community, you become a peacemaker. Helping them experience for the sake of reaching harmonious agreements between parties of conflicting opinions. You must always seek to overstand the things that you know, and always seek to experience the overstandings of this gospel. Live by the productive experiences of your life. Learn to repeat the actions of your own success. Say it again. Write that one down. Learn to repeat the actions of your own success. Learn from the mistakes. This is what we're talking about tonight. That's why we chose this overstanding here, or this divine performance, really for, for right here. Learn from the mistakes as well as from the achievements made by your actions as well as the actions of others. Discipline is a result of wisdom and overstanding. Whoop. This is science of mind. This is just how shit works. Discipline is a result of wisdom and overstanding. Applied wisdom is overstanding. A hip-hopper's wisdom is manifested in that hip-hopper's life. It proves that he truly overstands. More than just talking about what they have experienced, you can see the results of a hip-hopper's wisdom by the effects in and of that hip hop is life. Joy is an effect. And see right here, don't look about what people have or what they're saying or what they're, what any of that. Look at these type. This is how you, this, this is what you're looking at. 
Because people can put on all kinds of masks and fronts. And you can believe somebody it feels a certain way and they don't. But this is how you want to feel inside. This is the goal. This is the aim. Joy is an effect of overstanding. Peace is an effect of overstanding. Mercy, compassion, justice, and patience are also effects of overstanding. However, you can be wise and not experience any of these virtues. Be guided. Wisdom and knowledge are two different things. Wisdom can be achieved through life experiences, while knowledge can be acquired through educational and intellectual studies. But to overstand is to have experienced them both. To overstand is to act upon what you know and have experienced. Knowledge proves that you know some things. Wisdom proves that you have experienced some things. But overstanding proves that you are active in both your knowledge and wisdom of things. For it is the guidance of our God that adds valuable experiences to our knowledge. Such experiences create wisdom. But even the wise are not always motivated to act. Notice that. Even the wise are not always motivated to act. They have experience, yet they are not always experiencing. Know this. Wisdom is not righteousness. In fact, to be wise, one must go through some very unrighteous situations. One must experience things that can only be experienced in failure, fear, and ignorance. And after one has learned from such fearful and ignorant experiences, one then becomes wise. For when knowledge is backed by experience and the hippopa can skillfully apply them both while performing life, that hippopa is said to be overstood. For it has been said that the experience gathered from books is of the nature of learning. The experience gained from actual life is of the nature of wisdom. And a small store of the latter is worth vastly more than any stock of the former. And that's a quote from Samuel Smiles in a book called Self-Help, New York American Book Company, 1904. Perform overstanding. Perform overstanding, my nobility. And this is why knowing history, real history, is so important. Not the fabricated history of the colonizer, but to know your history, your own personal history, the history of others who are attempting to do what you are attempting to do, the history of whatever you're studying. You know, go back and what is the history on that? Learning from others, that's wisdom. Learning from what others have built off, that's wise. Learning from the mistakes of others. Learning from, and I'm glad it brought up here because I haven't even brought it up here. Wisdom comes from achievement and victory. You become wise on how to do it. After you learn how not to do it, you become wise on how to do it. And, and, and then it becomes more and you experience more. And life is about the experience that we're having. That's that Zen, you know, and that Tao. It's about the experience that we're having. And a lot of people aren't really experiencing life. They're experiencing the world. And the world is not life. The world is like, it's like a sleep hypnotic state. So people are experiencing what the world wants them to experience, but they're not experiencing the life that God wants them to experience. And when everybody was telling me, don't do that, be afraid, you know what the consequences are going to be of that? The consequences of that have been freedom, insight. The consequences of that have been wisdom. The consequences of that have been grace and peace and prosperity and freedom. The ability to go and experience life and to go and sit in places that nobody else is, or, or not nobody else, but other people don't get to sit and experience in because they're always in that same town. They're always in that same city. They're always doing that same thing day in and day out. And that's an experience too. I ain't this and nobody. Like, like I, I think I could have lived a great life as a farmer, you know. Uh, uh, I could have had a patch of land and just gone into town and lived on that land and had a great experience in life. So it, uh, for me, though, my soul needed to travel. My soul needed to experience certain things, certain countries, and still does, certain places in the world, certain soul experiences. I had experienced things like ayahuasca. I had experienced things like, like um, 
acid, which was an experience I would, I would I like, that's a mistake and a failure. I would say if anybody ever offers you LSD, just politely turn it down and walk away. If you, if you need to go there, God created all kinds of, of so-called psychedelic medicines. Don't stay away from that scientific crap, that laboratory created crap. I've, I've, I've tried, you know, and I, I have a whole other message from the minister I'm going to do in the future about um, my psychedelic experiences because it's a huge part of my life. Um, it was, you know, I don't really, you know, I, my, my, I, get, I get, as my friend said uh, this week, it uh, gets high off his own supply just through breath control, you know. But I also smoke some weed once in a while. But the, uh, uh, the, the, if anybody, I'll just tell you this is wisdom speaking here. This is experience and knowledge that I've experienced and I want to pass on. Like, like um, once I tried mushrooms, I was like, oh, I want to try everything else. I want to try ecstasy and LSD. And, and they just felt so phony to me. And I had this real bad trip on acid. And I just, God showed me like what a mistake it was. And I just want to pass that on to you. Go for the mushrooms. I don't care what nobody else tells you. I don't care what experiences. I've met people who say, oh, it's the greatest experience. But I've watched their lives as they grow older and drop too much acid. And, and, and they never become. They never become. And I'm not dissing anybody who does because maybe you did. I've known somebody who got dosed with a high bunch of acid. And now, you know, he's, he, he's, he's a guru now. You know, he just sees beyond the planes of this mortal existence and the space. So... But that wasn't really his fault. He, somebody dosed him with a high, high, high dose. And it, so, so through God's grace and the universe's grace and misery, he's allowed him to, you know, see the beyond. So, you know, that's where mistakes, can, God can take a mistake and turn it into something, into a beautiful work of art. But let me tell you something. Like, um, if, if there's mistakes that I, that, that, that we could call regrets, and I w it would be a regret if I dropped acid. Um, I would never, if I could go back and never do that, I would have never done LSD. I would have never touched it. I didn't, I touched it that, you know, a couple times. It wasn't, but when I hit, really hit the strong dose and I really went there with it, never, never do it again. And I tell young people and anybody who's thinking about it, just don't do it. If one person doesn't do it, two people don't do it, just based upon me saying it through my experience, then, then it makes my experience worth it in that way. Because it was, it was to my natural being and my natural like shamanistic side of being, like it just, it, it's, and I'm glad I experienced it, right? I say, it made me who I am today. So anybody who's experienced it, no judgment, no nothing there. But I will say this, uh, uh, some psilocybin mushroom, some magic mushroom is a far superior experience that you're not going to have all this other stuff that comes with it. Peter Tosh said LSD is Lucifer, son of the devil. I'll just let Peter Tosh put it there. You see, we make mistakes and we can turn them into wisdom. And then the wisdom that we learn as we grow older becomes something that we can teach our community with. I'm older. I've been experienced with that, especially when it comes to something like planting crops. You want some like 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 when you're planting food and you're especially when we're when we start becoming more dependent upon planting our own food. Like 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 wow, man, like somebody who's gone through the trials and tribulations of planting and growing food. You want to listen to that person. And, and so many people, especially young people, they just get, they're so full of ego and I don't got to listen to nobody. I don't got to listen to nobody. All right, cool. But, but when there's older, experienced people around who can actually guide and help you, put the ego down and learn. Humble thyself before people who know what they're talking about. You know, you got to put up with attitude, but like, yo, man, I, I like, like, I've learned some great things from people who've, who've given me attitude while I was learning, tough love or whatever it is. But as I was learning, wow. You know, jiu was great. You make a mistake in there and you fall on your elbow wrong or you bump your head and you're seeing stars you're like, oh man, woo. And the sensei comes over, he's like, what happened? I watched you. What you need to do next time is you didn't put your arm up and you didn't roll with it like I said. 
Now try it again. And the next time you like put the arm up and you just like, okay, trial and error. Trial and error, right? Transmuting mistakes into wisdom. And that wisdom applied becomes overstanding. And then that overstanding becomes like your art. It becomes your productivity. It becomes your penmanship as you're writing and decoding. Like, like it's amazing what the mind, it is so, when I watch people I know whose mind is free, the few, the, 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 the few that I know, to watch an unhindered mind at work, it's, it's, it's simply amazing. You know, the freedom to listen to the, the like, like Prince make music. It's like, wow, an uninhibited mind. He didn't know what he couldn't do. So he created this, this, this musical masterpieces and these layers of music that, that from my humble opinion and my experience, like when it comes to just music, like the layers of Prince and the, the, the epicness and the, the, like as a conductor and, and, and the instrumentation and the playing of like, wow, the harmonizing, the lyrics, the whole thing, uninhibited, a free mind. But through trial and error, he perfected who he was and he perfected his expression. And all of us can do that on any level. You ain't gotta be Prince, you gotta be you. You ain't gotta be Martin Luther King, you gotta be you. You ain't gotta be Bob Marley, you gotta be you. You ain't gotta be Karis One, you gotta be you. You ain't gotta be Bruce Lee, you gotta be you. But watching these dudes and learning from them, wow, that just makes some more freshness, right? Like, 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 yo, man, like, like, like I'm older than Bruce Lee was when he, when he, when he left this earth. I'm way older than he was when he left this earth. I'm still learning from Bruce Lee. Right? What do you, you gotta, you, you ain't gotta be, I'm older now than Martin Luther King was when he left this earth. But man, like, like that masterpiece there, I have a dream and I've been to the mountaintop, like, whoa, I'm older now than Jesus was when he, before he left the earth. And like, yo, I'm still learning. Right? That's why you gotta put your best foot forward and do and be who you are. Who cares what the world and the ego of the world? Oh, we're going to judge you and tell you not to say that. We're going to judge you and tell you not to do that. While we stay in the same place and exploit you. And that's not just the, the world and the media and the government. That, that could be family members. That could be the people you work with. Come on. You already know what the message is. Free your mind and the rest will follow. <laughs> Don't be afraid to make a mistake this week, my nobility, an honest mistake. And let's keep it there. It's an honest mistake. I'm not saying this is not a way to go sin and just say, oh, I can just do whatever I want. No, that, that's, that's not, nah, no. Nah. This is about honest mistakes and learning from our mistakes and transmuting it into wisdom, which is a God-given ability, this God-given ability within us. Go forward this week, hip hop, in your God-given abilities to transmute so-called mistakes into wisdom and then perform overstanding. And there it is. Hey.